can tell you about six feet deep. In the wake of the success of 36 Chambers, every member of the Wu-Tang Clan had their own version of success branching out from the group. Method Man both tried solo efforts and started smoking a lot of weed with Red Man. Anyone? You? Anyone? You? Raekwon and Ghostface spent a lot of time together. Artists like You God and Jizzo were doing their own thing, for better or for worse. And ODB decided to just... Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the owl, dirty, yeah. doggy, yeah. Here we go now. <laughs> do whatever he wanted. However, the one figure who seemingly kept the most busy was the man behind the sound of the group, the RZA. Not only was he responsible for pretty much all of the instrumentals on the solo outfits from his bandmates, he also pulled together his own solo records, which... They're fine. But more interestingly, he was approached by another famed hip-hop producer, Prince Paul, more known for... To start a group Paul had been wanting to pull together since 1990, when he was looking for a new musical outlet. One wrought from the dark side of the hip-hop coin, and after bringing on fellow rappers Poetic and Fruquan, the four of them called themselves Gravediggers, a group who sought to craft hip-hop that leaned heavily into darker lyrical territories, backed by a production that enhanced that tone. Following this formation and a change of the debut album's title, which was originally... Yeah, I'm not going to touch that. They settled on a name that still invokes the sense of dread from the group's name. I'm talking about their incredibly influential and well-constructed debut, Six Feet Under. Grave Diggers were not the first group in this style in hip-hop, not by a decent margin. I mean, even in New York alone, Esham had beat him to the punch a couple of years or by a couple of years already by dropping records like Closed Casket and Kill the Fetus along with his other early stuff. Um, ICP was already doing their thing out in Detroit with uh, Carnival of Carnage, and I think Ringmaster came out about that point as well. But I will say, in this era where horrorcore was still kind of finding its foot in the subgenre or in the genre of hip hop, The Grave Digger Six Feet Deep was probably the best produced record of that era and it's more than likely because they had two producers in the group who knew how to make fucking fantastic hip-hop you know prince paul had already done stuff with de la soul like i said in the intro 36 chambers was already out so like these two guys already knew how to make hip-hop sound really good and even though prince paul has his hand across this project more than the reza when the reza comes in either whether in soul production like on uh, the title track or graveyard chamber even when he just dips his hand, it has that sort of rugged touch that works really well for this sound. And while I would say that this record doesn't get necessarily as graphic as the Esham, uh, early Esham records especially, they still get pretty dark and morbid and find a good balance at presenting that dark stuff and towing the line at delivering it, you know? I mean, they have 1-800-SUICIDE alone, which has the, the KRS-One sample in the chorus, you know, of it's a suicide, it's a suicide. Uh, they have Diary of a Madman, which sees them in court for murder and are pleading to the fact that demons made them do it, something that wasn't too uh, off base for stuff that had happened in the world, you know, and they do a good job at tapping into that dark side, or even on... A track like Defective Trip, Trippin' that has them dipping more into the acid tinge side of horrorcore that artists like, again, Esham and even Brother Lunch Hung after them were doing much more intensely. You know, uh, and they do a good job with the production side of leaning into that sound a lot when they want to, like on Blood Brothers or Defective Trip or Two Cups of Blood or, you know, even getting a little more Wu-Tang-ish like on Nowhere to One, Nowhere to Hide, which was originally going to end up on the Wu-Tang project but ended up here. And I will say, this record as a whole is tight as fuck, even with its skits, which tie really well into the identity of the group, finding out what grave diggers are, you know, and talking about that in tandem with all this morbid stuff. It just feels like a really cohesive project. While horrorcore records tend to be pretty skit heavy, outside of ICP trying to tie it to a concept, this actually feels pretty well rounded in that regard, which again sets it above a lot of records that were coming out around this time. While again, artists like Brother Lynch Hung with Season of the Sickness would come out later and Again, try to use skits as sort of a unifying force or tie it more br bridging songs together. This adds to the sort of murky sound that the group is toying with with a lot of the uh, almost interview style uh, skits or um, 
just generally adding to this feeling of it feeling like a holistic experience. You know, I really enjoy this project. I would say it's up there for one of the quintessential classic horror core releases. You know, it's a it's a project that sees a marriage of the hardcore hip hop tendencies that artists like the Rizzo were already well and antiquated with, with a much darker side. In fact, Rizza leans into this so well, it's almost upsetting that he doesn't go this hard on his solo work because there isn't a bang your head on Bobby Digital, at least not that I can remember, you know, and I feel like he just seems to have his heart more into this project than some of his solo work, which is nice to see because I like the Rizza in, in the group setting with Wu-Tang. It's one of the best things about their dynamic is the Riz's more unhinged delivery that he taps into really well on this project. One thing that I think is interesting is that for how spastic Riz gets on this project, it's amazing ODB never showed up on here because I feel like he would fit really well in this group of rappers. And that's not to put all of the weight on the Riz lyrically because Poetic and uh, Fruquan really hold their weight as well for dudes that may not necessarily have had as much sp spotlight. I mean, Fruquan was in a group with Prince Paul as well, so they weren't unknowns. You know, my gateway into the group was through the RZA and Prince Paul because uh, I liked De La Soul's production. But um, listening to this record uh, and hearing these other two dudes really go bar for bar, you know, it's it's no surprise that even when the RZA left and Prince Paul kind of detached himself from the group as well, they still kept it going because they do a good job at painting these dark pictures in tandem with, you know, the RZA. You know, they do a good job at hitting heavy like on Diary of a Madman or Blood Brothers in particular. You know, the wordplay and the weaving it into your own sort of life perspective works incredibly well. And I like the execution on tracks like that. And Two Cups of Blood, which leans even heavier into that dark macabre sound that the group seemingly was aiming for. This is just a really dope record in this style, and I like that it came together like this. You know, it's a record that is looked upon very fondly as a classic in the genre for a reason. And again, I think it's because not only in the scene where a lot of dudes just kind of throwing shit at the board and see what happens, or people were kind of dipping into it in their own sort of way, this sort of made it just an outright horror experience. And I feel like while they do get intense, like I said, they pull it back and they don't go as far as some of the other dudes in the era were doing and I feel like that was really smart. You know, while writing stuff about killing and murder and drug use and stuff is, is not very uncommon for the genre, again, they're not dipping into like rape territories and stuff like that. They're keeping it dark, but they're not, they're pushing the envelope, but they're not pushing it off the table. And I think that that was the smarter move on their part. You know, I really like this record and I and I understand why and I, and I get why it has its its classic status and I would agree that's why I'm talking about it today and I feel like if you need a dark grim hip-hop record to spin um, I would listen to this you know horrorcore is one of those genres that has like a really big asterisk on it for quality stuff but I do feel like there are some quality releases in here this is just one of those that's like up there as like one of the uh, shining moments especially in the early era that this genre was going through now this album at the time did also get a lot of exposure because it was again sort of the poster child of the genre for a while when a lot of acts were still kind of figuring things out this kind of came out in a way where it seemed like they just kind of nailed it perfectly the first time and again it's celebrated for for that uh, has been celebrated for that over the last 20 25 or so years weirdly enough this record doesn't have as much tributes or anything to it as the years have gone on. It's gotten reissues, and again, members of the group kind of throw it in circulation live from time to time, but it's not one of those records that's like Wu-Tang, where it has like documentaries made about it or anything like that, you know? At the time, it had a lot of exposure, but uh, as time has gone on, it's one of those kind of looked fondly upon projects without a whole lot of homages done to it, which is interesting, because usually a lot of stuff in this era is celebrated to a larger degree. Um, horror, of course, kind of very, a very passionate fan base within its genre, which again, the album is respected, but it's not really homaged in that sort of way. But yeah, as I just want to talk about Six Feet Deep and tell you guys if you want a classic horror core record to spin this Halloween season, you can't go wrong with this. It's dark, it's twisted, it's morbid, and it's a well-produced classic. 
What are your thoughts on Six Feet Deep, though? Do you like this record? Are you a fan of horrorcore in general? Is it a genre that you've kind of been turned away from, given some of the current poster children of the genre, like uh, ICP and psychopathic records and stuff like that? Do you, do you feel like there should be more stuff like this? Are you unaware of stuff like this? Let me know in those comments down below. If you like this particular video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general notary content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons if you would like to join their ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or help drive the community. It's linked in the description. I'm going to get out of here. I have been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations, and I'll see you another day. Thank you.